David McDonough and Kevin Gannon stood just above the surface of Lancaster Hole, a deep underwater cave system facing an impossible reality. Their friend, Simon Halliday, had entered the cave solo over four hours earlier with the expectation of surfacing after three hours. He never showed up. Simon was known to be one of the best cave divers in the area, so his friends were left with a feeling of dread. Something had to be seriously wrong. This is his story. Lancaster Hole is part of one of England's greatest limestone cave networks, extending beneath Cumbria, Lancashire, and the Yorkshire Dales. The cave network was originally founded in 1946, and since then it has welcomed many to explore its depths at all times of the year. Today, if you want to explore or potentially dive sections of the well-liked cave, you simply reserve your spot in advance, and you are all set. The surprisingly unassuming entrance to Lancaster Hole is a manhole cover. Below, the pothole's main shaft opens up, allowing skilled potholers access to the world-famous Ease Guild Caverns and Three Countries Cave System. The entire cave system stretches for over 41 miles, and there are areas throughout the system that can only be accessed by diving as they are fully submerged. Simon Halliday, a 49-year-old father of two, had explored and dove Lancaster Hole many times. In January 4, 2020, was supposed to be just another dive. Simon was from the charming town of Clitheroe, where he spent most of his life. He was described as a hard-working and dedicated individual who excelled in everything he set his mind to, especially when it came to physical activity. But there was one sport that always captivated him, cave diving. Simon had a natural talent for the sport, and early on, he quickly became one of the most skilled cave divers in the country. His passion for diving led him to explore some of the most challenging and remote cave systems around the world. He had a particular fascination fascination with exploring underwater caves, which required a unique set of skills and equipment, but everyone knew the danger that came with cave diving. After he became a father, Simon decided to take a break from cave diving, as the time commitment of being a family man, along with the dangers of diving, well it just wasn't worth it anymore. But while on holiday in Egypt, nearly two years after he had quit, he got an opportunity to get back into the water. So he did. It was during this trip that he received his dive qualification, which opened up a plethora of opportunities for him. After returning from holiday, Simon would become an active member of the Northern Division of the Cave Diving Group, or CDG, a community of passionate and dedicated cave divers. He was respected and admired by his fellow divers, who regarded him as one of the very best. Simon was best known for his tenacity and unwavering commitment to his goals. He was always considered the strongest member of the team, and never shied away from the toughest challenges of a dive. Yet despite all this, he was known to be an extremely humble and approachable man. He was always willing to share his knowledge and expertise with others. To improve his stamina and fitness, Simon would join the running club, Clayton Lee Moore's Harriers, in January 2004. He always referred to himself as the Fat Caver because he liked to have a good time out on the town Friday night, so this was a way to keep his body in check. Unsurprisingly, he would go on to compete in some of the toughest fell races as a renowned fell runner, and his plan? Well, it worked. His cave diving ability would only improve. On January 4th, 2020, Simon visited Lancaster Hole with his two friends, David McDonough and Kevin Gannon. But Simon, being an experienced diver who had explored this system before, planned to dive alone, while his friends explored a different section of the cave. The total dive time was expected to be three hours. On this particular day, there was an unusually high amount of water flowing into the channel, which made the dive more challenging than usual. Despite the adverse conditions, Simon was determined to proceed with the dive, as he wanted to complete the challenge that he had set for himself. Simon would be wearing a rebreather, which was allegedly still in development at the time and not yet ready for purchase. The device was provided to him by Sump UK, a sporting goods company specifically for this dive. A rebreather is an underwater breathing device that captures carbon dioxide from a diver's exhaled breath, allowing it to recycle the significantly lost oxygen content. Just before entering Lancaster Hole, Simon would post on social media, Just setting off now. I'll be underground all day. We'll post something later. This would be the final post he ever made. 
As Simon descended into the depths of the cave, he encountered a series of challenges that he had not anticipated. The water flow was stronger than he had expected, and he had to exert more effort to make any progress. Despite this, Simon remained calm and focused, relying on his years of experience and training to navigate through the cave. After Simon left, his friends would wait hours, and after the three-hour mark, there was still no sign of him. Both of them were confident that Simon knew what he was doing, and if he ran into any trouble, well, he could handle himself, so they decided to wait. But then four hours hit, a mark that meant something had to be wrong. Simon would not be this late. With their anxiety continuing to increase, they eventually decided to call the police, and rescue groups were immediately dispatched to the site. The rescue operation would contain over 40 members who were all experienced divers and had undergone rigorous training for such situations. They began their search at the spot where the cave divers entered the downstream route of Lancaster Hole. In case Simon had exited one of the systems somewhere else, the team members and cave diver all also examined other entrances and potential exits, but they found nothing. Soon after, the rescue divers entered the water. The search would end. Sadly, Simon was found about 196 feet down the sump. They found him after 14 minutes of diving. The rescue divers would bring him back to the sump pole chamber and remove him from the water, but their fears were confirmed. Simon was gone. Simon's oxygen supply hose appeared to have been severed or ripped out. However, it was unclear if this occurred during the dive or after the recovery. The subsequent lengthy and challenging extraction back to the fell's surface involved all team members, but Simon was eventually lifted from the cave where he could rejoin his family. Uncertainty surrounds the tragedy's actual details. As mentioned previously, there was a greater than usual flow of water into the tunnel, although Simon did not consider this to be a problem. It seemed that during his time in the hole, the water's current intensity grew. This could have made him use more air on his return trip, where he would have been fighting the current. If Simon had been under stress and had to breathe more heavily because his air was running out, this issue might have gotten worse. Of course, this is all speculation but Simon's dive computers in Quest data also supported the idea that he had shifted to his bailout option once his rebreathing apparatus failed. The equipment used a straight fitting into the rebreather, according to the rescue diver. If such were the case, the fitting would not have unscrewed according to him because it was an elbow fitting with a 90 degree bend. As a result, Simon was in a race against time when his rebreather failed, and he nearly made it out. The accident would be classified as a drowning as the official cause of death. Obviously, the incident broke the hearts of his family and the diving community as a whole. The Pegasus Diving Club would post a memorial to Simon, and the amount of comments and stories is a testament to the life he lived. John Cordingly, his close friend's post, sums up everything you need to know about Simon. A character like Simon would have struggled to come to terms with the insidious onset of old age, alongside the detrimental effects of one's capabilities, yet he achieved a lot more in his shortened life than most others do in their three score years, and then ten or beyond. He was a genuine and generous bloke, always willing to give his time to help. Simon was one of the northern section's most promising newer members, and his loss was a bitter pill to swallow for all of us. Goodbye old pal.